and welcome to another RSR tonight I'm reviewing France U23-3 United States U23-0 in Paris 2024 Olympics men's football group A France that second half was very similar to Canada versus Netherlands USA had a good enough first half kept it tight kept the draw but a lot of Manager malpractice led to the loss, and we'll, we'll get there. France, sub-23. Francia, sub-23. Tres. Estados Unidos, sub-23. Cero en la Juegos Olímpicos. Fútbol. Masculino. Grupo. A. USA loses the match. Deservedly so. That first half, they deserved to draw maybe even a 1-0 lead. But in the end, this game should have been 3-1. I think that offside late on was BS. But in the end, that still would have been a loss. I mean, the USA were, at best, okay at times. Like, this game was a very questionable match. Like, this game was not good enough from the United States side. Especially in the second half. Nil-nil at the half, cero a cero, miro tiempo. Listen, the first half, the USA was very good defensively. They had their chances. They had their chances against the run of play to really put them away. But one of the things that really threw me off in the first half was Marco Mitrovic making Duncan McGuire drop back into the midfield and have Jordi Mihailovic basically play striker, be the tip of the spear. That makes no sense. Second half, he started having Duncan play up and play the tip of the spear, play in that striker's line. Didn't take long for them to get scored on. It wasn't Duncan's fault, but it sucks that they could have had a chance to take a lead in the first half if they played Duncan where he's supposed to play. You play that ball through to Duncan McGuire, if he had some room in the box, if he was playing up there, I think they would have scored. I, I think they would have scored. The problem is, yeah, he hasn't been too great this year in MLS compared to last year, but it's, he's still got it. He's still got it, and he's still got European teams watching him. You let him play striker, he probably scores. Now, is that enough to win this game? Who knows? Or even draw it? Who knows? But I think that was the first thing that really glared to me as a idiotic manager move was letting Duncan McGuire drop into midfield, basically play the 10, and then you have Jordi Mihailovic become the main striker. Basically, they completely rotate. That first half tactic was just wild. When it came to France, they had their chances. They looked like the better team. They looked like the favored team, for sure. They had more possession. They had some really good chances, but Patrick Schulte made some really good saves. But France still looked like France. Or even as a U23 team, they're still a big favorite in this tournament because their youth levels are getting better as, as a group. Their youth levels are getting better. They have Elise. They had Mateta come in as an overage player. They had Lacazette come in as an overage player. Loic Bade come in as an overage player. Two of their players were overage players who scored goals in this game. We'll get there. But when it came down to it, France... Their youth levels are growing very well as well. They're a very good national federation, football-wise. They're just very good nationally, football-wise. They know how to build a team. They know how to build a squad. And Terry Henry, I think, is a very good manager. He's doing very well with his team. And I think they do play up with a mentality to play up to his standards. And that really helps. But first half... I think it would have been fair. The draw was fair. I think a U.S. 1-0 lead or a 1-0 lead either way would have been fair as well. But a draw was very fair. But in the second half, took about 20 minutes, 45 to 55, 15 minutes, 16 minutes. But France starts scoring in bunches. Alexandre Lacazette scores in the 61st minute, takes a banger of a shot into the net. Nutmeg's defender just a bit through the legs, and Schulte dives a second too late, misses the ball, 1 0, 1 0, France. Alexandre Lacazette with a beautiful goal. 70th minute, Michael Elise scores. 
Ball played into Elise. He's on the angle, and he smashes one home. Or lobs one home, I would say. It wasn't a smash, but a lob. But a goal from Michael Elise, who now plays for Bayern. Went from Crystal Palace to Bayern in the summer window. Will be playing for Bayern this year. And you see why with this goal. Michael Elise gets the goal 2-0. Dulce Cero, 70th minute. Then in the 85th minute, Loic Bade off the corner. Ball played in. A bullet header. Top bins for Loic Bade. Played well as a center back in this game and also gets a goal for his troubles. I wouldn't say troubles, but performance. Add on to his performance. 3-0, Tres Acero. That's the way it would end. 3-0 on the night. Tres Acero, Estenolche. France wins. Deservedly so. That second half was a absolute melange by Marco Mitrovic. If you thought the first half was bad, this man made subs when the goals were scored. 71st minute was his first sub. Brings on Maximilian Dietz. 77th minute, brings on two other players. After the Bade goal, brings on his subs. He made all five of his subs. The only person he didn't bring on besides the goalkeeper was Benjamin Kramoski. I think he would have changed this game. But when you look at it, why are the subs after the goals? When you're down, when the game is over, you make the bulk of your subs. The bulk of your subs are made after the game is completely over. My God, do you have any game sense, Marco? Do you have any game sense? Because after the first goal, honestly, there were some players that deserved to probably be subbed off at the half. Even though you got the draw, there were players that deserved to be subbed off at the half or about the 60th minute. Who's to say if you make those subs at about the 60th minute, that Lacazette goal gets scored? And Maximilian Dietz? What? Benjamin Kramoski's there. All right. Taylor Booth. Taylor Booth, which should not even be at this tournament. Taylor Booth and Griffin Yao should not be at this tournament over Diego Luna and Cade Cow. That makes no sense to me. That's another malpractice, is the fact that you sat Cade Cowell at home, well, in Chivas, and he's on fire right now, by the way. A guy who was a cornerstone of this Olympic cycle, sitting at his club team on fire right now because, maybe because you snubbed him, but the fact is, is you have a guy like K. Cal, who was a cornerstone of this, scored against France back in March to tie the game up 2-2, and you leave him at home. You have a guy like Diego Luna, who is, a, who is playing so well this year for RSL, a team who nobody expected to do anything this year in MLS. And you're saying, but... People are saying, oh, but probably because Cade Cow plays for Chivas, if he stayed for San Jose, he'd be playing at the Olympics right now. Then you look at a guy like Diego Luna, who's playing in MLS right now, who's not at this tournament, while having a MVP caliber season. Chicho is as well, Evander is as well, but one of the MVP caliber seasons in this league. Probably lower level, but still there. And he's not there. So... Either people aren't watching Salt Lake, which I get it because Salt Lake's Salt Lake, but Diego Luna, if he switches to Mexico, it's your fault, pretty much, which you deserve it, Marco. If you make him switch, the Federation deserves it because of your idiocy, but K. Cow could honestly switch too, I think. He's young enough to where he could switch after playing the Gold Cup. I think he still can switch to Mexico, and he has Mexican citizenship to play for Chivas, so he might switch too. I wouldn't blame him. Diego Luna seems like the one who's more pissed off, but I wouldn't blame either of them for switching because you are an idiot. You are a manager full of malpractice, and I guarantee to you after this, I don't care how good you say France is, the first half, it all fell off like a Jenga shack. Now, I guarantee you, Marco Mitrovic will not be the interim USA manager if they do not find their manager before the September window. I guarantee to you that. They will not do that after that after that performance after that display. Yet yeah, no, he's he's not getting the interim job if they have to give the interim job before they get their guy. He is done. 
Stats are as follows after the match. 10 shots to 9, 4 shots on goal to 3. 53% possession to 47% possession, 479 pass to 431, 84% pass accuracy to 80, 18 fouls to 10, one offside to four, one yellow card to one, zero red cards to zero, eight corners to two. Listen, Marko Mitrovic is a horrible manager. This team doesn't have two of their best players that they could have had that would have, I wouldn't say would have had to be released, but when it comes to U23s, they're more likely to be released than their overage counterparts. I mean, it was going to be impossible to get Pulisic or Gio Reyna or Falaire and Balogun, especially since, since they played the Copa. But you could have easily got KCAL and Diego Luna. Diego Luna was right there for the taking, even if Chivas didn't say, hey, you know what, we're going to keep Cade. Even if that was on Chivas and they just didn't say anything so you could take the blame. Because, of course, they would. They're a Mexican team who plays all Mexicans. And Mexico versus the USA is a big rivalry. Of course, they'd like to see the USA take some shit. But, you know, I bet. Wouldn't surprise me. But Diego Luna should at least be there. The management of this team is a joke. They have talent on the pitch. That I agree with. That first half was good. That I agree with. But this this group ain't easy. This group ain't easy. Okay? It's not easy. It's not hard, but it ain't easy. If the USA plays like this, they might just get grouped again, Copa style. But hey, at least your hardest match was the first one this time. Unlike the Copa, where it was the last one. And you had everything to go for it. Now you know what you need. Go get it. But when it comes to France, I mean, I'm pretty impressed by France. The U23s here, they've got a good squad. Thierry Henry's a good manager if he is to be the next USA manager. I would not be mad about it after this. He he went and worked the youth team. Now, you could say that may not want him to get the job. That may tell him, hey, you know what? Maybe this job's not worth taking because he worked that U23 team. I don't think any of these... Let me be honest. With who they have now, I don't see a guy like Griffin Yao being anything more than a sub during a Nations League or Gold Cup campaign. I don't see it. I don't see Jack McGlynn being much for the national team. Paxton Aronson, he might be better than Brendan. I may see some more for him. Duncan McGuire, he's in that meat grinder of strikers that none of them are performing right now. Walker Zimmerman will play the Gold Cup. Miles Robinson could be on the main team if they want him to. But he has had his moments and also Gold Cup time as well. Jordi Mihailovic is a Gold Cup player, point blank period. Paredes, he might be something, but he didn't show it tonight. Yeah, I mean, this could definitely make Thierry Henry not want the USA job, and I wouldn't blame him because that was a horrible performance. But this isn't the team he's working with, and I don't think many of these players he'll end up having to work with, except for Gold Cups, if he stays that long. Post 25, 26. If he stays for like the 27 gold cup, he might have to work with these guys. But, you know, if he does get the job, he's going to hate that. But I'm sure he'd have him playing better, though. We'll find out, though. But with that being said, France, they look good. France looks really good, and they are the team that people thought they would be. I mean, this was a tough match. This was a really hard match to play. USA should be happy to get out with a draw in the first half, but that second half ruined it. All the good momentum, all the happiness of it. Just like the Canada-Netherlands game, this was a very similar type situation where you get a good first half and a disaster second half. And the disaster second half wipes out anything positive that could come out of this game. Be like, yeah, we held them to a 45-minute draw. That's not the game. Hate to tell you. If they gave you points for half times, yeah, good for you. But that's not what they do here. So... There you go. But France, they are the favorites here. They are one of the favorites here. One of the top four favorites. They played like it. They look good. They look really good. Interested to see how it goes for them throughout the rest of the Olympics. With that being said, yeah, that's where I'll go with it. The USA are incompetent as a federation. The U23s are incompetent. And Marco Mitrovic is an incompetent manager. Thierry Henry 
you better hope he takes the job. For focusing on Frenchmen, I mean, yeah, Patrick Vieira's had his moments, but Thierry Henry just washed your ass. U23s, but you better hope he takes his job. I think it be it means more if you get a guy who washed your ass. <laughs> you know, knocked you out. It's like the enemy of my enemy is my friend or whatever type thing. It's like, okay. It's like Benedict Arnold. I, I don't know. But better hope he takes the job. Because I think he's better than Vieira. It's not as good as Hervé Renard, but, you know. Well, they might be even, but I'm not sure how even. But definitely better than Vieira. With that being said, if you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell your friends. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Once subscribe. Send some chats on the live streams. Comment on this video. Put us to play. Share with friends and family. All that great stuff. I will see you at 7 o'clock Central, 655 for the MLS All-Star Game. We'll be live for it. We'll review it. I'll see you later. I'm Ron and I'm out. Peace. USA, you disgust me. France, good job. Peace.